So this week I'm in my living room and I'm sat at my new desk which totally beats blogging and editing at a dining table. And I actually used an offcut of the Toronto Foam Marble Workshop from the Utility Series that I've been doing. I haven't finished yet, I've still got to seal the sink by the way. But the reason I picked a marble is because I actually wanted to use it for food photography and things like that. But then I thought, hang on, let's just make a desk out of it. Put some storage trays underneath. You'll notice that I have changed the position of these since I filmed it. And I've used the end caps that I bought from Wix that are traditionally for a kitchen worktop as well. So there's a few little elements that would apply to a utility kitchen series. So anyway, if you want to see how I did this, then keep on watching. So here's my foam marble laminate worktop from Selco. Originally this cost about 55 quid for a three meter length, but I've got about 140 centimeters here. And to cut it, I use masking tape on the top, place the worktop on my saw horses, and start cutting with a handsaw from the front profile edge, and then just sanded the rough edges. Now, if you remember a few weeks back, I'd bought a laminate end strip from Wix that I never ended up using, but I thought it was perfect for this. So I held it against the front edge, but I noticed that it didn't curve exactly to my profile. So I protruded it slightly and drew around my curve with a pencil. So you can just see this is how much I needed to remove. And because it was slight, I just used a flat file for this and then smoothed the rough edge with some sandpaper. So I lined that up again and drew along the back this time of where I needed to cut it off. And I clamped it down and this time cut with a junior hacksaw. Although mine needs replacing because it's partly broken. So then I wanted to seal the raw edge with some silicon sealant and I'm using some clear for this and I applied a couple of beads, wiped over it with my gloved fingers and then pushed the end strip or end cap back on and then left that overnight to set before I pre-drilled the screw holes and fixed on with some screws. So now it's time for the hairpin legs which I were kindly gifted. So I'm flipping this over and I think the hairpin leg company normally sells these in packs of four but they were sweet enough to send me six because I was worried about this worktop bowing in the middle if I didn't use any extra. And because I'd never held one in my hands before, I asked for the heavy duty ones in three rod and these are 70 centimeters long. I'll leave a link to them below, but they do them in various finishes and styles. Plus it matched the end strips. And then this was so straightforward. I set a combination square to 30 mil and I just positioned my legs 30 mil at each angle in every corner and then mark the screw holes with a slimmer drill bit than the screws also making sure the drill bit doesn't go straight through to the good side and then fixed in with the screws provided. Now for the center one I just found the halfway point and drew a straight line with a speed square and lined up the V shape of the legs with that pencil mark. So I flipped it over on its raw edge and use the saw horses to my advantage. Oh, and the legs also came with these protective rubber caps to stop it marking the floor. I'd also been thinking a lot about possible storage options because I wanted to be able to put camera lenses, food props, or a bit of stationery. And this is a very exposed area. But I found these £1.50 IKEA Trofast tray storage boxes were perfect for the job because they had a lip around them. And if I created a rebaked piece of wood that had a lip to trap it up, then job was a good one. So I made my drawer runners using two different sizes of scrap wood. But right now I'm holding a piece against the long side of my box and then marking and cutting it. And I did this four times per different shape wood. And to find the perfect lip, I put the two different pieces of wood together, held it against the box and then clamped, drilled and screwed them. And I did that four times because I needed two runners per tray. And I know this wasn't necessary, but I just wanted to do it for aesthetics. I sawed off the other side of the lip that I didn't need. So to fix my drawers, I just eyeballed where center was to be honest, because I had these symmetrical legs anyway as a reference. And then pre-drilled and screwed that down to the worktop. And then found some more scrap wood to create a back stopper piece and then drew along the length of that, cut it down and pre-drilled and screwed that to the back as well. But if you do anything differently, particularly the storage, then please comment below. And I think that's it. Oh, and 
on Christmas Eve at 12 o'clock lunchtime, UK, um, it's the last day for voting for me to win a blogging award. So if you could do that, I would absolutely appreciate it. I know I've been talking about it every week, but you just don't know what opportunities that could come from it. So uh, yeah, I'd absolutely love to win again, and I get to find out on my birthday next month. So anyway, hopefully you have all a great Christmas, Happy New Year, and hopefully I'll see you next year. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye. Merry Christmas, everyone. No, <laughs> he's got a poorly poor today. Poor. Oh, poorly poor.